Good morning and welcome back to the carving shop. This is Tom Christie and we're in uh, session two of carving a Drake wood duck decoy. So today we're going to focus on the head. We'll get it rough shaped and we'll do some layout work before we, we go there. Hey, if you're enjoying the YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button. I know I say that a lot, but it's, it's worthy of repeating. It doesn't cost anything and that way you get notification as I continue to add content to the website, hoping to build this into a place that new people can come and pick up decoy carving and people that have been carving for a while might pick up some techniques that they haven't used before. We all have kind of different approaches. There's no one uh, right or winning approach, uh, especially in decoy carving. So. Uh, Welcome back and we'll get started on this Drake Wood Duck Head. All right, I've got my pencil sharpened and we're ready to go. And uh, I've put a center line around the entire perimeter of the head so that we can keep that intact as we carve and we don't lose the pattern. Uh, the bill, I wanted to make a note. Somebody asked me, hey, why do you have these notches in your pattern? That's actually a bill pattern, and what I've found over time is these little things tend to get lost, misplaced, or thrown away. And this way, the bill pattern stays with the body pattern, and I can always use it on the next decoy. So using the center line, and this, and by the way, this bill pattern was developed from a study bill, just tracing around it and cutting that out so that we have an accurate bill profile. And then I've traced around that on the top side and on the underside. And now I'm gonna use my dividers, just like with the other decoys that we've carved. The process is the same, the geometry is a little different on a wood duck. So I'm measuring from the tip of the bill back to where the cheek begins and transferring that with the dividers to the to the wood so I know exactly where that bill is supposed to meet the face now a, a note on that that's only one point of contact here so it doesn't mean that's the shape of the bill as it meets the face because you can see there's a lot going on especially in a wood duck bill I'm just working to define where does that cheek meet the bill, and I wanna know that as I begin cutting away wood so that I don't get that cheek way back here or too far forward, the bill's too short and stubby. So it's just kind of an accurate location, and then I'll transfer that line over here. We'll, I'll do some layout work. I'm not gonna take you step-by-step step through this, you can refer to the other carving videos I've put together on other species, but I'm gonna do the layout work and then we'll cope the bill and, and the rough parts of the head out with the coping saw before we start grinding. Just a few more quick layout notes on the head. The geometry is different as, as we mentioned. So this crest that comes to kind of a, a narrowing in the back, we need to keep in mind. We can't just draw a cheek on this bird and start hacking off a lot of wood because we're gonna wanna maintain this crest and that crest kind of blends in towards the back of the eye here. So we got to keep that in mind as we're carving on both sides. This is a higher head wood duck drake. So the neck narrows pretty significantly. So I've sketched in the size of the neck there so that I can keep that in mind. And as I'm cutting other areas, I'm not taking off too much wood down here that I can't, that I'm going to need when I mount it to the body. So I've got things sketched out pretty well. Also notice this V shape goes back to 
just past the eye normally is where I shoot for for my rough cuts and uh, I strike a line across there and drop a vertical in the position the head's going to be in just to give myself a guideline with the coping saw of where I want to come out when I'm making this cut removing this wood on both sides did that in both places same thing here kind of a guideline across a vertical drop down so that as I'm taking off this wood again I'm not getting too far into the cheek area and removing wood in this area that needs to be the widest part of the head okay let's get some cutting done all right I'm going to use the coping saw Follow my outline, and if anything, I'm going to cut it a little larger than where my lines are, so that by the time I sand the bill, take a little wood off in carving, it's not getting too narrow. This is a case that comes up periodically if the bill and the neck are relatively close together. Uh, I can't finish the coping saw cut to get down to my guideline without starting to cut into the neck area. So in cases like that, I use a little hacksaw with the blade extended out, chase down the uh, coping saw cut, and just use that hacksaw to finish the cut so I can get it down to this area that I want without uh, gouging up the neck. And I have to do the same thing on the side cut. Now I can go back with the coping saw and cut my V shape. Being careful I'm not cutting too much off the neck area. And then right down to that guideline on the side. Just a quick view of that with those two cuts made and we've uh, preserved the wood down here. Still have a neck. So now we'll make these two cuts on the back of the crest and then we can start grinding. I'm gonna leave this rounded back here we may eventually carve a little bit more of a point in there, but for strength right now and to keep my options open, I'm just gonna leave some wood there. And again, I'm cutting down to this guideline, roughly. Same thing on this side. I want to try to point out the key differences as we go along in the wood duck geometry. Um, one of the key differences is just the shape of this bill. From the front, these flare out quite a ways. So we're going to want, and I put some marker on the outline of that bill to make it easier to see on the video. But we're going to want to do some, some layout work to get that bill position defined. And normally where I start with that is the, uh, the end of the notch here, or what I call the notch, to the tip of the bill. The, uh, get that dimension set. One other caveat, there are different sizes of bird bills. You know, they're all relatively the same, but there are larger and smaller wood duck bills. So you want to make sure you compare your pattern that you developed with the study bill that you have. Um, and I'm just getting a dimension from, sorry, let me move that over, from the tip of the bill up to this farthest extent. And matching that up with my study bill. My study bill looks a little smaller than the bill I have on my pattern. So I'm going to compensate for that in all my dimensions because if I just transfer these dimensions 
onto this cutout. This bill may look a little small in comparison to the head. I'm gonna back this out so you can see a little better. So let's get a measurement up to the notch, to the tip of the bill. And knowing that this bill is a little bit smaller than my pattern, when I transfer to my wood, I'm going to give that just a little more room, a little additional length, not much. So I've got that area set. And now I want to get a dimension on the width of the bill. And you probably can't see that in the video, but it looks like outside to outside we're a little under three quarters of an inch so i'm going to go with three quarters of an inch on my carving and that's three eighths and three eighths so i'm going to give myself a guideline on the width i'm looking for up here and then i want the distance from the base of the notch here up to the lobes or whatever you want to whatever the correct term is for that part of the wood duck bill so i've got that dimension so it's going to be roughly in that area but again knowing my bill is a little bit larger i'm going to eke it up just just a little bit so they're going to end up somewhere up in that area so I can go ahead and sketch in my notch shape and look at your study bill closely for the shape that's right for the, the duck that you're making. I want to establish where that notch is before we start carving away wood. Uh, so I'm going to do that and then on the side you can see the bill comes back at a slight angle, but it doesn't follow the profile of the forehead. It's going to come back in this direction. And I guess I'm spending so much time on this layout work because I see this as a key challenge in this wood duck drape carving, getting this bill shape correct. Um, so we're going to spend some time on that. The other thing I'm going to do is get a measurement off of my pattern. Open that up so you can see it from the tip of the bill to the top of that yellow lobe up there and go to the side profile here and give myself a guideline on where, how far back that goes into the face on both sides. So that kind of comes back here, then bends back down to that cheek, key cheek line that we uh, cut in earlier. And then we'll go back here from, from there. So a lot of lines, but we're gonna need those the reason I did this is when we cut this notch and begin to form that notch, we need to know how far down to, to remove material so that we don't dig out too much and we end up with a, a mallard bill here or worse. So we're going to be taking out wood right here, 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 and here. Hopefully that's not confusing. It's just important work to get that shape established right because that's half the look of that wood duck along with the color patterns and the crest that bill is critical. While I'm at it, I'm getting a dimension from the tip of the bill back to where the upper and lower mandible meet right there in the corner. And I'm gonna transfer that to my wood just to give myself a guideline down here for how far back that's gonna cut from the front of the cheek and do that on both sides. So not, not very far 
It doesn't return very far down here, but it does a little bit. That's just gonna give me some guidelines as I start grinding. And we'll go back and forth to the pattern to make sure if I lose those lines that we get them back. But I'm gonna start with the ruby grinder, cylinder grinder, which you've seen me do before and remove wood on both sides of the notch area here. Okay, I've got that 1 8 or so inch diameter ruby bit. I'm going to use that to begin to t define the notch area on both sides. So starting from this back and pulling down the notch. And removing wood to take it down to that sketch we did on the side there. So that gives us a, a target for how deep to go. I'm gonna speed the video up so we can just watch progress. I'm gonna work back and forth in both directions to get that down to the target line that we sketched on the side of the bird. I like to pencil in as I go just to keep my uh, guidelines fresh. So I keep a pencil handy and and it helps you take a look at the bird also symmetry wise and how things are shaping up. Now I'm going to remove wood on the side here. And I'm going to use this little triangular shaped bit to do that. And follow that guideline and take the width of the bill down in that area to the target width on both sides. At the same time, I'm starting to shape the face and the cheek and rounding that as we lower that, narrow the bill, we need to uh, blend the cheek back into the, the bill. So I'm gonna cut to kind of the finished part of this particular, you can see what I'm doing, working those areas down starting to do some rounding of the bill and keeping the center line intact so we don't lose the pattern. This takes a little bit of work, takes some time to shape things up, but I'm just taking that bill down to the proper width. and then blending that into the crown. Again, some pencil guidelines, get a better look at how things are shaping up. Now I'm gonna use the triangular shape bit to relieve the corner of the, the rictus there where the upper and lower mandible meet and do some more blending. I'm taking material out on both sides and taking the width of the bill down a little bit there and then rounding that back into the face. Again, some pencil guidelines. Now we're gonna do some work on narrowing the crown area. Now some quick layout work. I know the crown is one and five eighths inch. So pretty, pretty good crown on a wood duck drake. So I got that laid out here from the center line again and tying into the notch area, going back over the eyes and then narrowing up 
as it goes moves into the crest here. And so we're going to take out wood in this area. I'm going to leave wood in the cheek area for now. Eventually we're going to take wood out down here and form this neck. Right now I just want to narrow the crown and the crest in this area above the, the cheek. Now I'm speeding the video up again and I'm going to use this three quarter inch bullet nose saber tooth burr and use that to narrow the crown to hit those guidelines that we sketched on the top of the head. And I'm leaving the material under the eye at the original width. I'm just taking this crown area above the eye and fading that in as we go back on the crest. This is very similar to other videos I've done in, in this area. The only difference is this crest area. And we want to fade that back into the crest and give the crest some shape as we're narrowing the crown. So I'm, I'm doing that here. Kind of narrowing the crest back there, leaving again that cheek line intact right now. And then I'm blending that crest and narrowing it as you go towards the back of the head. Now I'm going to round the cheeks. I'm going to do a little work to fade the cheeks into the bill area. I'll skip forward. I'm leaving the cheek intact there, but I'm starting to work under the neck and going with that neck guideline that I have on the bottom of the head, taking material out to form the neck there. And then working to that guideline that I gave myself earlier and then rounding that into the neck area. So there's not a hard, harsh transition there. You want that kind of hourglass shape from the front of the bird. And follow that same process on the other side of the head. This is still two times speed and I'm gonna use this cylindrical burr to begin to define the, the lower part of the crest and then round that area as it goes down to the neck. This is just roughing it in at this time, so I'm not trying to be too precise. We may have to reposition the crest a little bit later. I'm just roughing in shapes right now, removing wood so that we can do the refined work later. I'm starting to take shape, and now I want to work on the eye width and get the bill shaped up a little bit more. Now that we have some rough shaping done, I want to go back and take a look at the bill and uh, I can tell I need some refinements there. I've got plenty of wood but I want to go back to the pattern and define this location again using my dividers from the end of the bill and I also want to look at the pattern closely and I would say I've got this going swooping up too far. It needs to come down a little bit more, maybe back a little bit more. And that's okay. We can make those kind of adjustments. The other thing I'm seeing from the front, this is the width I'm looking for. I'm still too wide. Get a good camera angle. It's still too wide on the bill up here, so I'm going to... And you can see there's some symmetry issues there from side to side. So I'm going to start refining this bill location again to nail it down. Dig it in a little bit more so it's a little more narrow than it is at the top. And 
and you'll hear me talk about we're going to stop and take stock and uh, I think that's important because you can grind away and remove a lot of wood in the wrong places if you're not careful. You can see I was on the wrong track there and that's easy to do. So I'm going to go back with the uh, little cylindrical grinder and kind of redefine where I think those should be. You know, another good measurement I need to check is from the corner, from the rictus there to the top of the bill. That looks pretty good. So I do checks all along the way. Let's check this side. Not bad. So let's work to refine the bill location, those lobes up there that are so critical. And uh, then we'll begin doing a little more shaping on the head. We've got to narrow the eyes somewhat. Okay, I'm speeding up the video again. I'm using that eighth inch cylindrical ruby bit and kind of following those guidelines, digging in a little bit and redefining the bill lines in that lobe area and also narrowing them up. And by digging down a little deeper, I'll have to do the, take some material off the face to blend it back in to the bill. And that's okay, we've got plenty of wood here. So I'm gonna skip through the rest of this video and just kind of give you segments as we go so it doesn't get too boring. Using the pencil again to see what I'm looking like here. It's just easier to see with pencil lines. And I'm happier with that look. I still need to work on some width, but I'm getting a lot closer. Now I'm going to work on narrowing the eyes and hitting the proper width dimension from the front. You can see it's too wide right now. So we need to create a little groove in this area. That's the groove that the bird can look forward and, and see what it's eating. So I'm using this little... Uh, triangular ruby bit and digging that in and then I'm going to use it to round in both directions create those eye channels on both sides I'll speed the video up here I do a lot of roughing work with this shape of ruby bit because it's got a kind of a point to it but then it's got a nice broad surface in back if I need to dig in a little deeper. That's starting to shape up. Let's give it a check. Yeah, so I've hit the dimension there. Now I just need to blend things out a little bit more. And now we know the eye width is set at the proper depth. Just one more caliper check and that looks good. So I can go ahead and round the, the crown now. I like to define the depth of those eye channels before I start rounding the top of the head. And I'm just using this uh, three quarter inch round nose saber tooth burr, fine burr to go ahead and round the crown. I'll kind of skip through this, but as you go towards the back, then you're gonna blend that into the crest. So it's not a, a Frankenstein back there. You just want uh, a nice rounded look to the crown and then blended back into that crest area. So it narrows a little bit as you go towards the back and blends into the crest there, if that makes sense. Then I'm just doing some general blending and 
narrowing the cheeks a little bit there to blend back into the bill. And it's shaping up. Now I'm going to use the small cylindrical sander with about 120 grit and just do some rough sanding of the head to take out tool marks and blend things together and, and get it ready for some of the finishing work that we'll do in the next session. All right, we've got the head sanded and kind of rough shaped. Now I just want to put that separation between the upper and lower mandible in. So I've got a measurement there from the pattern, from the tip of the bill to the corner here, the rictus. Now I'm going to take my knife and carefully come down just a bit from that point and score a line following my guideline that I put in place out to the tip of the bill. Now I want to go from this angle, dig in with my knife. And then I'm going to switch the camera angle. Very carefully go in about a sixteenth of an inch. And go at this slowly and score that line deeper and deeper. And I hit it again on top. Pop that out. And I'll do that both sides. Just a quick shot of that. And we'll sand that a little bit. We've got the head pretty well roughed out. All right, I think we'll call that good on session two of carving the Drake wood duck. We've got the head roughed out. In the next session, we'll work on detailing the bill, setting the eyes, maybe some final detailing on the head. Yeah, I wanted to wish all of you dads out there happy Father's Day. And until next time, this is Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to you.